Welcome to the Ubalati Chorale's Spring Concert for 2017, entitled Tapestries of Vocal Design. This is a section of the program where we will be giving you the program notes that are in the printed program, and because you're watching us on television, you don't get to read that. So our guest today is uh, Maxine Aslan, the director of the chorale. And first question I wanted to ask you, Maxine, was what was the concept behind the tapestries of vocal design? Well, I hadn't come up with a title initially, but last year when I was thinking about what to do for this spring, I decided, okay, I want to feature the men's section and the women's section, you know, because they're both so talented and they both, as individual sections, would have a lot of different kind of literature. So that's what I arranged. And I was telling uh, one of our officers, Diane Enos, about it, and she said, oh, what's the title? I said, I have no idea. I have no idea what one would call this. So she thought about little one. She came back to me and she said, what about a tapestry of vocal designs? I said, that's wonderful. However, in my head, I went a step further thinking about the word design. Okay, we had a design of men, we had a design of women, we had the whole, you know. What about a design in the way they stand? Choirs usually stand in rows. You know, when you think of a choir, you think of a row of people. And I'm thinking, that can get boring. What about if I arrange them differently? Well, you've so, always been very good at arranging things differently. I mean, <laughs> we don't very often go section by section by section. You really mix us up frequently. Right, and we're still mixed up. You well, know, most of us were born that way. On purpose, <laughs> that is, vocally. Yeah, so I, I've got the men kind of like in an X. I've got the chamber ensemble a cascading down. I've got the women a row, two rows over here, and a row here. Almost looks like a big zero. And then I was thinking, oh, I got X's and O's here. <laughs> <laughs> and the chorale, which it sings last in the program, will just be in the usual rows. Okay, the first section of the program is the women's uh, section. And the first uh, number on that is this number called Wally Wally. Do you have any uh, thing you want to say about that? I have no, first of all, I have no idea what Wally Wally refers to unless it is something to do with English culture because that's where it comes from. It's a song about a lady who falls in love. She discovers that her love is unfaithful. She gets very angry and sarcastic. And then she says, how could I do this to myself to love somebody and he's off and gone. <laughs> well, stranger things have happened I in know. this world. I know, I know. Here is our first selection in the concert, the women's section, the first number, Wally Wally.
Our second selection for this concert from the women's section is a number called Heart We Will Forget Him. Do you have some good? Yes. The composer, James Mulholland, has a very close association with Yubilati Corel. Uh, when we had our anniversary several years ago, I commissioned him for the Corel to write a selection. And he said, well, what po po poem do you want to use? None of us knew in the Corel, so I said, okay, Corel, write one. So several people in the Corel turned in poetry, and it was J. Enos's poem called Timeless that Mulholland selected. So we sang that, and Mulholland was here at our concert, you know, and went out to dinner with us, et cetera, et cetera. Several years later, maybe not too long ago, a poem written by another one of our basses, William Laughlin, was set to music by James Mulholland and was premiered at the All uh, Oklahoma Allstate, which I think was great, and Bill went out there to hear it. So he has a special uh, place in our heart, so to speak. And now, he's also becoming, you know, a very rapidly becoming a very one of the very favorites of the uh, chorale too. Definitely, definitely. This one is another, another <laughs> love thing, and it's accompanied by French horn. It there's several selections of Mulholland that just grab you emotionally. This one does that. You know, we will another. We will forget him, you and I, and. When you have forgotten him, Hart, you let me know so that I can follow right along in suit. And right at the end, it said, I still remember him, Hart. <laughs> so that's that. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely piece. And now, the women from the Yubilati Chorale singing, Hart, we will forget him.
The next selection in today's concert is the women singing Selections from My Lady Greensleeves. Now, I remember, you know, years ago hearing Greensleeves as an old traditional English song, uh -huh. and yet evidently there's a lot more to it than I've ever heard before. Oh, there are different melodic settings to the same words, and this is a set of pieces. There are five of them. We're only doing three of them, and they're very short. Uh, and your green sleeves is in there. The composer of this I find interesting because he lived in the shadow of his brother, who was two years older. We know everything that his brother did in music. The only thing that we know about what Robert Hammond did, that they, the two of them uh, collaborated and went around the country and collected folk songs. They collected over 600 of them. And this little set of five is five of those that they collected, then they would arrange them. So that's it. I think the funniest one is the last one, which is Miss Bailey's Ghost. That's a conversation between two, Miss Bailey's Ghost and Captain. The captain said, oh my goodness, Miss Bailey, you're looking rather fraily. She says, well, of course I am. I, I'm dead and they won't bury me because I don't have the money to pay them. <laughs> and the captain says, well, take some money out of my great coat here. And she says, oh, you're so wonderful. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> yes, it is funny. It moves along quickly. So, The Hammond brothers were the uh, brothers Grimm of the English The brothers music. Grimm, yes, indeed. <laughs> And now, selections from My Lady Greensleeves.
And now we move on to the men's section of the chorale, singing some numbers that they will sing all by themselves. And the first one is, I've got peace like a river, another one of those old spirituals that we love so much. Yeah, but it's not set like that. The, the first melody that comes in is, I've got peace like a river. All right, that goes on, and it's with harmony. And then you get the second melody. The water is white, I cannot get o'er. And that's presented, and then you have the presentation of both these melodies going on at the same time, and you can keep track of two melodies, and over on top, super and prose is a very light tenor line. So we've got like three different lines all happening at the correct, same time. Correct, correct, yes. Kind of like an operatic trio. Sort of, but not quite that. That heavy? <laughs> that heavy, right, <laughs> right. And now the men of the Ubalati Chorale singing, I've got peace like a river.
The next piece in the program is a bit more contemporary, When I Fall in Love. Now, how did you decide to do such a uh, contemporary piece with the, in amongst all the rest of these much older pieces? Well, some of them, first of all, some of them aren't too old. And I wanted the men's section and the women's section to sing with an instrument. And I thought, okay, the, the instrument I would like to hear with them is the French horn. So I found a piece for the women that the, was the Mulholland one. And this one is for French horn and piano and men's choir. And can you think of a more perfect thing for them to sing? They do it very well. And oh. I think this will be a showstopper. Uh, incidentally, this is also arranged by James Mulholland. So you get that lush sound as well. And now, the men's section singing, When I Fall in Love.
The third selection from the men will be Wade in the Water, which is another one of those spiritual oh, tunes. Oh, definitely. This definitely is. Can I tell you a personal story about the composer, the arranger, with this wonderful name of Adolphus Hailstork? I was at the University of Connecticut working on my doctorate, and my, I was talking with my advisor, and he said, you know, you have to write something fairly soon. He said, why don't you go into the office over there? I'll unlock it for you. Use the desk, you know, and uh, write, and then I'll be here when you finish it. So I went in that office, and I closed the door. I guess it automatically locked again. And all of a sudden, there was a key in the door, and I thought it was my advisor coming back. I looked up, and here was this big man. He looks at me, and I said, I am so sorry. Am I at your desk? And he said, yes. I said, I, I've been put here by, etc." And I explained, and this was Adolphus Hailstork, who was on campus for a semester as a composition teacher. And he was... It was very gentle, very kind, but I will always remember that because I always remember that name, Eldolphus Hailstroke. This, this selection he arranged, it is very lively, very up and going, and I think, I'm pretty sure the men are going to sing it from memory. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, I, I love this just because of the bass line in it. It's yes. one of those things that oh, just yeah. Thump, right, it. right, right, definitely. And now, Wade in the Water. Now it's time for the Ubalati Chorale Chamber Ensembles section, and the first selection that they have to sing is Beautiful Dreamer, the old Stephen Foster tune that everybody knows, but nobody remembers Stephen Foster anymore. I know. 
I know. And two of the country's foremost arrangers and conductors had collaborated for a long time on several selections, and it's Robert Shaw and Alice Parker. So they arranged this, and they also had a tenor soloist. And it's a lovely thing with a melody that everybody knows. I think there will be several melodies that our audience will recognize as we go through the program. And now the Ubalati Chamber Ensemble with Beautiful Dreamer. The next selection in the program is Sing Me to Heaven, also sung by the Chamber Ensemble. This is probably one of my most favorite a cappella pieces. It's written by, and the composer I know because we used to hang out at conventions of choral music, Daniel Gothrop. Well, Daniel received a commission from choir director and in his area, and she wanted to show how singers, or what singers are feeling when they're singing music, or what they, the feelings are for all of music. And so he started searching for a text, and he looked and looked and looked. He couldn't find one that depicted what he wanted to show. So his wife, Jane Greiner, who was also a poet and collaborator with him, she said, he came to me whining. 
a little bit, you know, <laughs> that he couldn't find a poem. And she asked, well, what is it supposed to be for? And he described it, and she went to work on it. And when she had finished, she brought it to him, and she said, now, you know, if, if anything you don't like, we can change it, no problem. Don't feel like you have to take it. Well, he read it through, and I guess he was really inspired because within two hours, he had sat himself down at the keyboard and he wrote the whole selection in one sitting. It happened to hit the choral world in that six months that it was published, over a half million copies were sold. It just went like viral. It is it is sung at funerals, it is sung for all serious occasions, and yet it's not a sad thing, it's, it's a quietly joyful thing. Sing me to heaven. And now, sing me to heaven.
The next piece is Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Again, we come into the spiritual realm. Oh yeah, They're, they are always good. Finish, you know, finish a small program with or some something that has a little spirit and life. Yep, this is this is. It looks deceptively easy, but it's a little on the complicated side, and it moves like the wind. And I usually put in something about the composer's life in the program notes. So I'm looking and I'm looking. I looked on every site I could think of, and I couldn't find this man's name. I had his birth date, which was, I think, 1910, and I knew he really couldn't be alive now, be 117. You know, that, that's, I kept looking. All of a sudden, I found the same name, born the same year, and I thought, well, I'll just look at it. Well, it was him. The thing is, he was a lawyer by career, and he spent most of his time lawyering. In fact, he spent the last years of his life as the general counsel for the Atomic Energy Commission. I was duly impressed. I found out that on the side, he loved music. He loved directing music, he played the piano, and he also arranged music and composed. So I found my man who had a really second career, which was first in his life. And now, Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho. The final section of the program is the entire chorale singing together, and the first number they're doing is called A Lad and a Lass. Now this is 
a little bit more than just a song called Aladdin the Last. It's actually two other songs kind of put together. Going with the idea of featuring both women's sections and men's sections, this song does that. So for the men who start, their song is, Thou will come no more, gentle Annie. Okay, and th they sing that. And then the women come in, the men are quiet, and the women are singing, Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. And they finish singing that. And then they end the song, But call me back when... And the last words that you hear are, a lass named Gentle Annie and a lad called Danny Boy. And that's it. I'm very fortunate to have two assistant conductors, and one of them will be conducting this piece, Susan St. Pierre. And now, the entire chorale singing, A Lad and a Lass.
The next selection is called A Summary of the Pawns. Now that has a really odd little name. Isn't that so odd? Sounds like they're playing chess out there. Well, they are. <laughs> <laughs> I decided that I wanted the corral to do things that were just a little different, you know, to go along in keeping with the program. So I found this, this piece, and it's by a conductor that we have sung before, Gwyneth Walker. She has an interesting life. For years, she lived on a farm in Vermont, cow farm. She raised cattle. She wrote music. And now she's back in her birthplace, which is New Canaan, Connecticut. And the last maybe 20 years, she's dedicated just to the writing of music. So, summary of the ponds. You get a version of life on the chessboard as seen by the pawns. That there are these mighty pontificates, you know, the queen and the other players. And here you are, a small pawn, only able to go one space. You know, you can take a, take a person off the board by going diagonally, but you can only go one space and all of a sudden you're gone. And they have choreography in the middle of it, I guess, to picture the movement of a chessboard. So I'm thinking, how will my choir move around? So they're just moving the top of their body, you know, any, any which way. And then there comes a place where several of the pawns are taken off. And the words are, and frequently, before we know what has got us, off, 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 off. So I'm having them go, turn their head, off, 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 off. They're singing while they do it. And then we come to the end of the piece. <laughs> it's really different. And now, summary by the pawns.
next selection is Shall We Gather at the River? Again, we're going back to the uh, spiritual genre yes, here. Yes, and the melodies that are familiar to everyone. This also takes into play the a men's section and a women's section, not as in a major way, like the first one, a lad and a lass. But the women start this, and then everybody comes in, and then the men do a little part, and then everybody comes in. It is a, an interesting arrangement. The rhythm we all know is, shall we gather at the, the river? Yep, that's right. But this starts, shall we gather at the river? Very even, not at all dotted or anything, and then at the end it comes back dotted, and then it smooths out again. And that has presented us with a few challenges, remembering where is what. You know. And now, shall we gather at the river?
The final selection is called Not Without a Valid Coupon. Now, that is definitely not an old song. I mean, oh, gosh, no. That, in the program notes, you will find no words for this song because the effect would have been lost if you could read them first. So you're going to hear no shoes, no shirt, no service. Children must be accompanied by a parent. <laughs> Objects that you see in your mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> <laughs> we don't serve alcohol. We, the little sayings that all of us live with, we don't think anything about. No, I love the no shirt, no shoes, no service. And that's, and it's, there is no text repeated. So they're all these short little vignettes thrown at you. And that's it. Before we go to this final selection, I just want to say, if you've enjoyed this concert and would like to find out more about the Ubalati Chorale, you can visit the website at ubalatisings.org. And now, not valid without a coupon.